We are now ready to download our product into the HMC 3102A-M. One quick fix that we want to make before we do our download is earlier when I was selecting the input register for our move D word instruction, I selected slot one channel one instead of slot one channel zero. So we're gonna fix that real fast. We're gonna be looking at the channel zero, which is what we configured in our IO module to be zero to five volts. So we fix that. And then one thing that I like to do before I download is turn off the beeper. <laughs> what this does, by default, the HMC unit will beep whenever you press the screen and give a little double beep when you press an area on the screen that doesn't have an action and it is loud. So you can turn off bit S9, which is the beeper control, and that makes it so your HMC doesn't make a ton of noise while you're doing testing. <laughs> and now we are ready to download. I have connected my HMC unit with a USB cable it is a micro USB configuration cable, maple part number 7431-0119. To download, we can click this download button from the toolbar, or we can do project, transfer, download. We will be using USB. You want to make sure that firmware is checked, especially if you've changed anything or if it's the first time you're downloading this particular project to an HMC. We are downloading the application and the ladder logic to the unit. We're going to leave the device settings at their default. It's going to be put into halt mode before download and then put back into run after download. And it's going to initialize all the device registers. You can also download with a serial cable or over ethernet. With ethernet, you do need to make sure that your computer is on the correct subnet and can communicate with your HMC unit. Download. You can turn this message off for further downloads in the current session by just checking that box. The project has been downloaded and my HMC is restarting. To install the HMC 3-0808-Y-0401-T module, remove the cover over expansion port 1 on the HMC 3102-A-M. The contacts on the I.O. module are removable to make wiring easier. Snap the module into place and tighten the screws to secure it in place. The wiring for your test setup should look something like this. And now we can run through our test procedure. First we want to toggle the output bits to verify that they come on from our digital inputs and output screen. We are using the continuity function on a digital multimeter to verify that our outputs are coming on and off. Next, we want to apply power to X0 and X1 inputs and verify that our bit lamps turn on and off when power is applied. And then we will move to our analog input screen. Once we've connected our analog power source to our IO module, we can vary the analog input and watch our scaled input change. Then we can enable our enable limits toggle switch and watch our high limit and low limit outputs turn on and off based on the input voltage. And 
and then we can change our high and low limits as well as our engineering scales to verify that Y2 and Y3 toggle on and off at the new limits. And also to verify that our scaled input changes based on the engineering high and low values that we give it. We can also verify that when the enable limits toggle is on, we are unable to manually toggle our Y2 or Y3 outputs, but when it is off, we are able to manually toggle those inputs. And this is because the enable limits bit turns on a subroutine which will run continuously and override the toggle bits on our screen. And this completes our first sample project with native ladder logic. Next, we will create a second project using the IEC programming environment.